Okay, good afternoon. Very good. afternoon. Uh, is anybody in, didn't pick the material of the course? A couple left. Okay. Okay, uh, the only announcement, we have a first homework is posted. It's, um, to do that, you go to um, index of chapter two, and you click on the homework. You can <coughs> download that or print it. Okay, that's, um, that's due the next Thursday for, um, for you and following Tuesday for the um, BBA students. What's okay. BBA? BBAs are the one taking this remotely. Used to be called KIT and now it's BBA. No people are anywhere. Yeah, like, <laughs> like be better or something. I know. I got it, I got it. Some people read it and I'm like, no, it's be, be bolder. Okay. Um, and then. Actually, there should be a three. There are three exercises, and there are no equations, so it should be fun to do. Okay. Have to, they're all descriptive. Okay. Um, so one homework, um, one exercise there is about the source of nonlinearities, and you have to think about um, what are the sources, right? Um, so in the last class, we had... Um, Four, four, four of them were uh, geometric. Um, material, force boundary condition, and displacement boundary condition. And and the reason you need to uh, understand that is because the, the modeling and the, the solution method are different. So you have to adjust when you do um, different problems. And this course will do um, these two. Uh, as I mentioned, this is covering civil engineering and this, this and somebody told me it's a course in mechanical, right, robotics. Covers that. So one example is, um, uh, let's see if I draw that. Uh, it's supposed to be a hamburger, right? Uh, you're eating a hamburger, um, right? <laughs> <laughs> and question is, um, what what kind of nonlinear Nonlinearity you have in the actually not the eating process but when you bite. Impact. What? Impact. No, there is no dynamic in this course. You're eating very slowly. <laughs> Contact. Hmm? Contact. Yeah, we got um of course. <coughs> Contact and this one. So you got contact. Which is that? What else? A force. Well, an obvious one is a geometric nonlinearity. Does the geometry change as you bite? Yeah, you have your mouth open and then? Closes. Closes, right? <laughs> oh. There is geometric change. Geometry change. Um, material? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then the burger is nonlinear, right? Um, force boundary condition is a the force is changing with the geometry. <clears throat> rotation, right? Well, rotation is here, but the, is the force depends on the on the change in geometry. Well, yes, because there is, here is a tooth, right? And you have um, you have some pressure, and you also had fr friction, right? And then the orientation will change according to the geometry. So 
they, they follow the, the changing geometry as, as you, if you do that, okay? Of course, after this separates, there's no force, almost no force, and, and you, you swallow, right? Okay, so um, that's, um, I don't think that you get any money for doing that, but then maybe can McDonald fund you for doing this <laughs> to get better burgers? Um, no. Okay. Okay. So we begin now uh, this uh, in this class and the next with the so-called residual equation. That's um, that's a general way to formulate uh, basically any problem. Um, and they are the, most of the work will be introducing notation and definitions, etc., for later use in the course. Okay? Um, I just, so the residual equations, uh, this is a title, uh, covers chapters three and four. So we have um, <coughs> this one. Oh. Announcement. Okay. Okay. Um, so um, basically, you could say that involves the whole course. That equation. But is that enough? Well, it's like um, I don't know. We have. Um, I had this, there was a seminar at Berkeley when I was a student. There was a f very famous guy in mechanics came to give, give a talk. Very arrogant guy, by the way. Uh, kind of Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, and um, he said, well, for mechanics, all you need to know is this equation. I think it was something like That's it. Okay. That's it. So he spent the rest of the lecture talking about history. And then one of the questions was, well, how do you solve, say, no, geometric and nonlinear plasticity with that? And say, oh, those are details. <laughs> the details are behind these things. Okay. So this is in general is a, is a functional, and this is a um, tens, um, tensorial form, and so on. Okay, so, um, so so basically the whole course is about that equation, but you know the devil height square. The details. The details, right? So. Okay. But by. Looking at that, you can introduce some general definitions or concepts that you can reuse uh, as you go along. So, so that's the, that's the, called the total force residual equation, which is uh, symbolic, uh, is, um, is written, uh, It's a vector, it's actually like a functional form. It's similar to say f of x equals zero, which okay, this is a general form for solving equation that you learn in calculus. This this similar idea, but here each each one of this is um, it's a vector. Okay, so. Um, Okay, so this guy is called the residual vector or total residual. Total residual. And the total residual and is a vector. And the length of that vector is the number of degrees of freedom. Okay. So um, 
if you have um, say 20 degrees of freedom this vector will be length what 20 right if it's just one it's a scalar quantity okay okay this is um, so called the this is called the state vector In, uh, in our formulation, this will be the displacement degrees of freedom. Okay, so, <clears throat> okay, so it's the same, Th these two guys are the same length. So this is 20, this is 20, this is 1,000, this is 1,000, and so on. Okay, the last one is um, something sort of an new and nonlinear analysis, this is um, the control parameter. It's a vector or array. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, basically, you, this is a um, this is the way you drive the system with these control parameters, like the amplitude of forces, um, or it, it could be a, it could be something else. And forces it could be prescribed displacements or um, velocities. Um, if you're studying flutter in an airplane, what will be the control parameter? What causes the airplane to flutter? <clears throat> velocity? Yeah, the speed of the airplane, right? So the speed will be, you can put as a control parameter there. Okay. So, so there's an initial form. Um, if you write this in index notation, this will be like, um, you can put indices there. In that case, uh, you have a system of, you have a system of equation within initial form. Okay. okay. Right, so look at them. So in um, this um, this is an interpretation of the black box if kind of um, I, the idea in control systems in basically you have a control is where you your inputs go, or prescribed inputs. Um, this is state is the, um, these are the variables that define the um, configuration of your system. And out of this comes a residual. So, so if this is zero, then the system is in equilibrium, okay? Because these, these are residual forces. So the total force, each of the total force component is zero, you have a state of equilibrium. Okay, okay so, so I have um, here's an, I put this example in the notes. Um, here, so if you look at the example, how many equations do you have? Three. Three. Yeah, the number of, Number of uh, degrees of freedom equal the number of equations. Three, right? Okay. Um, so the residual vector will have how many components? Three. Three, so you call it say, R1, R2, R3. Okay, then you have a state vector how many components? As I mentioned, they have to be this, exactly the same as the <clears throat> residual. So this will be three. So three by one, U1, U2, U3. And in this case, I put how many control parameters? Two. Put two, right. So this is. <coughs> This is a capital lambda. Uh, use capital lambda because later on we reduce this to a system of 
just one parameter will be lambda for the single control. Okay. So, so this is the way you write it in long form. Okay. Um, by the way, is it linear or nonlinear? Nonlinear. Why is it nonlinear? Product of displacements. Yeah, you have some nonlinear term actually in each equation. Um, in many problems, the control parameters are linear in the equation, so you see the you just contribute linearly, right? Okay, so when you write in a matrix form, you use, um, let's say, um, this is the matrix form or vector form. Just shown here. Uh, oops, sorry. Let's put a comma. Okay. This is equal to. Okay, here you can expand this into the long form, then equal to zero. Okay. This will be the long form. Okay. Okay. So this is this example. Okay. So <coughs> how many taking linear five elements here? Nobody? Um, everybody, I hope. Yeah. Um, so you remember um, the basic equation of finite elements, or linear finite elements, sorry. Um, how do you, can you include the, this form into that? I guess. I guess, by the way, uh, you remember what these quantities are, right? Stiffness matrix. Capital K is? Stiffness. Stiffness. Stiffness matrix. U is a displacement vector. In this case will be the state vector. And F is the applied force, right? Okay, so how do you transform that to a residual? Basically, you put everything on one side, right? So then, on the left, so the right is zero. So you can say KU minus F equal zero. Can you do it the other way? I mean, is it possible to say residual is F minus KU? Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't matter. So in this course, we'll use this form. Um, the reason is to have a close correlation with a, what we call a tangent stiffness with this uh, linear stiffness. So otherwise, we have to change the signs. So we use this correlation. Okay. Um, but there were no control parameter linear fan because what happens? <coughs> if you want the solution with twice the load, you simply take a solution and multiply by two. Multiply by two. If you had two load cases, let's say F1 and F2, to get a combined action, you uh, take F1 and you add F2 and I mean, you add the solutions, right? Uh, in nonlinear areas, you cannot superimpose solutions, so you need to carry the control parameters along. Okay. So, um, so that's why you didn't see the controls in linear fine elements. <coughs> okay. Um, okay. There's another concept um, you need which is, um, what's a conservative system? 
half yeah. independent. Yeah, that's one a geometric property when you introduce work, right? Um, the mathematical definition is that the residual, you can get a residual as the derivative of a function, which is called the total potential energy. So, so, the, so you can define the residual as a, for a conservative system. Um, some is it, is it called a total potential energy respect to the degrees of freedom right not is um, is it a scalar or a vector scalar. the scalar so the derivative of a scalar respect to a vector is vector it's a vector right exactly so um, okay so um, Okay, so this is also called the gradient. Or the gradient of pi is respect to the that is residual, and if this is equal to zero, uh, what can you say about the gradient is zero? What can you say about pi? Minimum. Three minimum. It is constant. Constant. Constant? No. <coughs> Uh, hmm. It's an extremum, yeah. Um, it can be a maximum or a minimum, or in general it can be stationary, but that's the thing. So gradient zero is equivalent to, say, zero derivative in a way. Okay. So, so that's, the, that's the property of um, uh, the total potential energy. So, the other, in the, it's convenient for formulating primarily in special fine element equation. You split the R into um, basically two forces, okay? Uh, P is called internal force which is our internal force vector, and F is the external or applied force. Okay. So, um, okay. so that's, um, that's called a split. So you split R into P, which is internal minus uh, F, which is external. That's internal. Okay. So, okay. so the internal means uh, this is a, um, this is like a, an effect of storing energy into the body or releasing energy, whereas this one is um, the forces acting on the system. Okay, so if we, um, if we go back to um, this example, what, if you need to split this into internal and external, um, which, par which part will be the internal? So I take that. For each equation, you take an internal part will be? <coughs> All I use. Whatever, yeah, because the use are unknown, displacement. So you collect the use into that. And the, supposing the control parameters are given, specified, so, so this part will become the external. Okay. There. Okay. Um, at least for this case. In general, the forces might be function of display, applied forces might be function of displacement in, the, in one of these nonlinearity sources. Okay. Then both will be function of the, uh, the geometry. 
that case, or the motion. Yeah, so we go here, here. Okay, so this is, um, if you are familiar with control system, I put a block diagram. Basically, the, this is the state. So let's define your system. And you separate that into evaluation external forces. So here the control comes there. Internal forces, you add them up and you get a residual. Yeah. Any control guy here? Okay, that's why I wasted a slide. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. All right. Um, <clears throat> anyway, you can use that for another course. Okay, so here is a work it out example. Um, basically, you, you take this, you split the, the part that depends on you is goes into this vector, so it will be internal, so it will be P, and the rest is um, F, is the, the one you collect the control parameters there. Okay, so notice when you go to, when you split this, there's a minus here, so you, you, you change the sign, okay? So you see here, minus six omega, um, minus six lambda one, here it goes to six lambda one plus, so. Okay. So, the, so this, this minus become plus in the force. Okay, okay. so that corresponds to something we, you've seen in if, if the system is conservative, uh, you can split the, en uh, the total energy into two parts, which you've seen in the intro to fine elements, which are called internal energy and work potential. Internal, uh, yeah, internal energy the in is the energy stored in the system, okay, because the formations, for example, and the external. Um, W is external, it's actually not external energy, but external potential. Okay. External energy will be, if you change the sign of that to plus, um, that will be the in external energy. Okay. So, so that's some, some notation here is, uh, we have pi is U minus, <coughs> W. Okay. So, the, so this is a split we use. Um, is anybody taking dynamics? One. Okay, in dynamics, um, normally the, the split is um, U plus V, right? Actually, at least when you do the Lagrangian. So this is the internal energy, this is the external energy, and the sum of the two energies, total energy. Okay, so, so this is convenient for our work in statics. When you go to dynamics, um, you take the negative of that and you just plus V. Yeah. So, so you will not see V, uh, capital V again in this course, just W. Okay. Okay. So now we define some um, couple of matrices, which is used in this uh, work. The um, if you take the residual equation where R U lambda. This is the total residual, the total force residual. Okay. Um, the, this is called the tangent stiffness. This is the matrix. This is the partial of the R respect to U, and then 
again and the control metrics for capital Q is is the partial of R respect to the lambdas. Why is it negative? Yeah, negative actually. <coughs> Just to make that correspond to plus positive force when you split the residual. There's a negative it's a minus sign here. This is for convenience. Okay, so so if you say index notation Kij is what? Let's say Ij entry of the metric is the partial of I. R I respect to J. U J exactly, and this one will be partial of R I respect to the J. Okay. Okay. So here's in the. Um, I think I didn't put an example, but anyway, then. Okay, so here's where things get complicated. Okay. By the way, I assume you know met index notation, right? One, two, three, four. Okay, good. Um, so you're not surprised by um, in what they call the summation convention, you know, right? <coughs> if not, you learn that. Right. So um, <coughs> in general, the um, your solution will be evolving in to apply the control parameters, right? Okay. So the system is, is moving. That means the displacement are a function of uh, what? This, in, okay, if it's your system, if your system moves, this motion is a function of time. time. But we don't have real time in this course. We have only Pseudo-time. Pseudo-time because we don't use dyna uh, dynamic effects. So T in this course means pseudo-time. It's, it's a really um, a way to order states. It's a, hist it's a historical parameter as things move. Okay? So that's called pseudo-time. And we use derivative respect to pseudo-time are the same as in notations in classical dynamics. You put a dot over a symbol means derivative. Derivative respect to time exactly. So um, okay. So we have um, okay. So, so we have a, this is a function of t, and this is a function of t, and then. Um, you know, the residual is a function of u and lambda. So, so it's, um, it's really a function of um, this component, these two components. Yeah. Right. So, so to take, um, you will need to take the derivative of R respect to time, or pseudo time. Um, okay. What happens? Chain rule. Yeah, suppose we, suppose we do it in matrix form, not in index form yet. Um, if you take the derivative respect to time of this, 
you take the derivative with respect to each of these, right, and then apply the chain rule. Okay. So, um, so you have a R respect to U multiplied by U with respect to T. U with respect to T, right, plus R with respect to the control parameters and to T, right? Yeah. Okay. Then, but, but we define this guy to be what? K. K. Yeah, exactly. So this this guy is a stiffness tangent stiffness K. And this I can just call it. U dot. U dot. Yeah. Okay. This one we we define that to be in case of before here. Minus remember? negative Q. The negative Q. And this one we can call it delta dot. Okay. So, so this is a, this will be the vector derivative form. And and then if you put this in index form, you get um, these expressions here. Except, um, um, okay. So the derivative of each component residual is that component, is, and you get this term. Uh, if you see j and j, what, what's the meaning? You have in j and j there. Sum over j. It will sum over j, right? Here the same. It will sum. Over J, although the, the limits of sum will be different, this, uh, this sum is over the number of freedoms, right? This is over the number of control parameters, so it might be different. Okay. Um, if you, for some solution method, you need to take a second derivatives, especially when you do stability, then the, um, I hope you were. Uh, what happens when you take another derivative here? Product rule? Uh, yeah, use the product rule and the chain rule. And if you put that in, the, in index notation, you get this kind of messy thing. Um, anyway. Anyway, then. Um, Basically, this slide shows what I, I did there. If I use these definitions, then R dot is key U dot minus Q lambda dot. This is called the first order rate equation, also called incremental equation. Okay. And this, if you take another derivative, you get um, K U double dot plus K dot U dot and so on. This is called the second order rate form. So, okay. In the for most solution method, you just use that guy. R dot equals zero. Um, when you have a, when you get say to bifurcation point or so, you need locally to use the second derivatives. Um, to over that. Okay. 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 So. Um, so to alleviate, I put a simple example in the notes. Um, is actually, you don't need fine, do you need fine element for that? No. No, good, because we haven't introduced fine elements yet. You can use, um, you can use mechanical materials here. Um, I mean, you can solve this with undergraduate um, knowledge. Okay. So, so you have two elastic um, bars, which um, is an elastic property in the area. Here you put an um, uh, extensional spring with this stiffness. Um, this form is to simplify it. 
showing the result later in dimensionless form. Okay? But, um, what happens if you apply a force to this system? Will it get softer or stiffer? Stiffer. Of course, your physical intuition. It's stiffer? Yeah, stiffer because, well, the, the spring is linear, so it doesn't come from the spring. It comes from, well, when you, you're extending those bars that stiffen the system, right? Produces a, a increased resistance because the, um, this, this distance is fixed, so you're stretching the bars. Okay. So um, as you expect, what happened to the stiffness of the system as you um, apply the force? Goes up. Goes up, right? So. Um, um, in the um, see in the low deflection diagrams, what's the physical meaning, uh, geometric meaning of the stiffness when you do a low deflection diagram? Spoke. Okay. So, so you start from there. Uh, if it's linear response, it will be like that. But if it stiffens, then this will get so response like that. And the stiffness is the is the slope of this curve for, the, for essentially for one degree of freedom. Okay. So so, so k is the Okay. Right. So you expect the response of the system to be like that as you increase the load. Okay. Okay, so how many control parameters do we have? One. One. You okay, this guy is called a load in this case is a load load factor. So, so gamma, uh, lambda one will be, I wrote it simply lambda, lowercase, and I multiply by E A again to get the dimensionless um, plots. Okay. Okay. So we have. Um, okay. okay. So basically, if you don't have a final element, you can still do this by hand. What you do, you, you do the residual computation. Um, are you familiar with these things? From the body diagram? Which course is that? Statics. 2001 in aerospace, right? It's called, it's called mechanics. It's a mechanic material. Uh, no, statics, mechanic material, right? Uh, this is called... Uh, Body yeah, the important thing you do the free body diagram and the deform configuration. So you apply a um, suppose the displacement is U here. You do this free body diagram in that position, right? So now you have the um, uh, this the bar re resisting forces are these two, which are skewed, and this are the spring and and then. Um, which is the important static equation to balance the system? You equal zero. Second law. The vertical one, right? The horizontal is trivial. Trivial because these two are uh, identical, right? So, so you you get this usual equation. And now I put the um, the control parameter. Remember, is lambda. As a state parameter dimension, I divide the u by the length. So I make this. This is actually the tangent of that angle. Okay. So we have a 
lambda versus mu. Okay. Okay. So this is your residual equation. Uh, is it linear or nonlinear? Non-linear. Because which term? Square root. Yeah. Your state is in the square root there. So you can compute k when taking a partial respect to mu, and you get this effect. Okay. Okay. So uh, here I use something called the engineering strain measure. Uh, elongation, el elongation divided by the in, in initial length. Anyway, then, okay. So these are the responses for different magnitude of the, of the spring. Okay. Uh, do they show stiffening? Yes. What can you tell? Slope increases. Yeah. Um, what happens if you reverse the load? Are these curves right? Well, if you change, if you apply the load down, what happens? Will it get softer or stiffer? Still yeah. stiffens. Stiffens, because the bars will stretch, right? And the stiffness will remain linear. Okay, so... Okay. Um, yeah. So, um, so suppose you remove the spring by making beta very small. Um, what do you see? Suppose uh, for the blue curve, beta is very, very small. Um, so it's like removing the spring. Then um, you get this response. So. Do you see any particular point which is critical? Okay. For, so for no spring, the response is, um, is your, yes. so we anti-symmetric, but so which is an interesting point? Zero. Yeah, the reference point is actually, um, how do you call it, the tangent is horizontal. Limit? Limit point? It's a limit point, yeah. Not this, it's not a maximum or a minimum, it's a... Saddle. Inflection point? Inflection, yeah. So, um, so the, um, this, Feature the physics. Um, so you remove the spring. What happened to the system? Is that a good, can you walk over it? I wouldn't want to. Yeah, because the mechanism essentially in the linear case has zero tangent, zero stiffness. I get stiffness if you deflect. So that's, um, so we'll see later on the course, the, um, if you have one degree of freedom system, if you set the stiffness to zero, you get critical points. Uh, it's not true for a multi-freedom free system, then you, you have to get a determinant of that metric to be zero, but basically. So you're plotting K pretty much there, right? No, this is the response. So. This is um, this is the displacement. This is the load factor. Okay. So, um, okay. So if I apply the force here for a, a stiff spring, I get this displacement. Okay. Um, if this, if I have no springs, I get the larger displacement just here. Oh. You have some bad idea, Bob. This thing is supposed to have some arrows, right? Hmm. Okay. I think you move forward. Um, right. 
Now, if you plot the, I can plot the stiffness will be the slope of that, and this is the, oops, sorry. This is the stiffness. So, um, okay, so this is zero stiffness. This is one, so this is dimensionless, um, dimensionless plot. Um, okay, so a blue means uh, no spring, and then at uh, zero, zero, at zero displacement you get Zero stiffness, right? So, and it picks up stiffness as it deflects. Yeah. Okay. So, um, okay, so when you write a Feynman program, are they, these things of any use? I mean, you can do this in one hour, right? Pretty much. Well, the plots might take longer, depends which. But these are called benchmarks. That means if you run a Feynman code with this problem, you should. Get that. Yeah, otherwise you're getting money back from. I assume Abacus or Ansys can do that. <laughs> right? I was surprised sometimes I, I had some course, what they call open source. You, you download and they, they don't solve the simple problems correctly. But you see, you're not paying. You cannot call anyway. Anyway. Okay. Okay, so we're going over the, basically the residual equation and some definitions of involving derivatives. Okay. Um, one thing is, um, I guess, um, let's go to this system here. Um, can you solve that equation directly? No. I mean, in the in linear final elements, you have KU equal F a linear FEM. Um, can you solve that directly? Yeah. You can invert K. Yeah, or use a linear solver, right? Um, you say for, can you use a nonlinear solver for that? Yeah. Well, non, general nonlinear solver do not exist. Why? Too many special cases. Yeah. Yeah. The, is there a general nonlinear solver in MATLAB? Linear solver, you say. What's the name of that? Backslash. Forget the name. In mathematics, linear solve, and MATLAB is. Um, direct solver. What? Direct solver. The direct solver. What's the name? Backslash. Backslash? Oh, uh, yeah, you put a backslash, uh -huh. A, B, and you get a solution. Backslash, yeah. Okay. Um, but, okay, try that for MATLAB. Put an, um, the system there and see what happens. But, Basically, nothing will happen. Mathematics typically is, it doesn't exist, you get your question back. You say, do this, do this. <laughs> Response. Okay. Um, so, so, you want to reduce, um, um, okay. you want to reduce System of nonlinear equation to something you can solve with a built in functions or, or, or you can code easily. So um, basically, you cannot do this. No, it doesn't exist. Basically. There's no such a thing as a. No, no, 
general nonlinear solver. But if you take the derivative r dot, if you take the derivative r dot of that, what's the derivative of this? Zero. Zero. Can you solve that? It's actually M. This is called M. Um, differential equation? It's a, yeah. It's actually an ordinary differential equation in to the time. Yeah. This is, I forgot to say, this is the uh, abbreviation of this. Okay. This is the Okay. So this is a system of ordinary differential equation in T. Okay. Are there built-in functions in MATLAB to do that? Yeah, what's the standard of the solver? 45, right? It is Runge Kada 45. Four plus, I guess five is the it's a con error control, isn't it? Forty-four, ODE forty-five. Okay. So at least for a, for a very simple system like that, you can you can feed that into ODE forty-five, and you get a response. Yes, we we'll see. It there. When you get to a critical point, it blows up, but that's another matter. <laughs> but at least you, you get something to start it. Okay. So, okay. Okay, so that's the reason we went through the derivatives formulation. Okay. Okay. Um, but there's another problem. Um, Suppose you have multiple control parameters. Okay. Um, in that case, you're, um, basically you have multiple control. That cannot be solved directly by um, an ODE solver, a standard one. Okay. You can only do one, one control at, at a time. And that leads me to the concept of staging. Okay. Um, yeah. it's, the, it's the same, I put an example in the notes. What happens if you try to drive a car with two steering wheels? Can you do that? Fight each other. Suppose you have two drivers, right? One is one is steering wheel and the other. What happens? Collisions. Drive off the road. Huh? Drive off the road. Crash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, there are some games where you do that. What do you call this car in the ring? But you have to fight, I guess. Anyway, um, it was the same thing. When you have multiple control parameters, basically your solution can go almost everywhere. So there's no control over uh, the direction. Okay, so, so in practice, when you have a complicated nonlinear system, you analyze that as something called stages. And the reason is superposition principle does not apply. So in, um, in linear final method, if you have one lot case, say you have two lot cases, right? Suppose in a bridge you have a gravity and? Cars. Traffic. Oh, maybe yes. a third one might be, might be a wind, etc. cetera. Um, if the response is linear, you solve, you get a solution for each lot case and then? Superimpose, right? <coughs> okay. 
So you don't need, uh, although you're really having multiple control parameters, you don't need the concept. And nonlinear system, you cannot superimpose solutions. Okay. Okay. So, so what you do, you reduce multiple control parameters to only one or something called a loading stage. Okay. And then the single parameter will be called the staging parameter, and that will be denoted by lambda. So if you have only one control parameter, you simply replace it by lambda. If not, you can, you need to stage. Okay. So, okay, so the way you do it is um, uh, you have an exercise on that next week, but basically you can interpolate your control parameter from the solution at, or the, the control parameter at two things called lambda A, lambda B by linear interpolation, and here you can drive this along with only lambda. Okay. So your general residual equation reduces to that. Okay. So now you have a scalar, oops, here. scalar here. Okay. okay. So the example I have in the notes, uh, what's, what's that? Golden Gate. Is that the Golden Gate? No. No. Brooklyn. That was the first first suspension bridge in this country. It was it's in New York. Brooklyn. Yeah. Uh, kind of old fashioned, right? But the picture is from the 1880 or so. I mean that, right? So then, um, okay. So basically, you have um. Let's see if I can sketch a suspension bridge. Um, any civil engineers? I'm a civil engineer, so I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay, here's the. <laughs> okay, here's the deck. Here's a. Here's some water. I put a fish. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, so that's not very good. That's a deck. How do you suspend that? Some pylons. You put. You beams and then cables holding it up. Yeah. Maybe that's your next job. If you don't get a job in aerospace, you got to. Um, because there are not many suspension bridges. <clears throat> or you put something called? Pylon. Pylons. Is it? Yeah. And then? You put a cable here. I just spend the bridge, right? Okay. Okay. So, so this is the geometry with no no traffic, see, no wind, just like um, see, there's no traffic there, right? Um, yeah, I guess at that time you have maybe horses, carriages. Um, so there's no traffic. So, so you say, well, this will be my reference configuration. What's the problem? Self-weight. And there's no weight, but you don't know this. Okay? You don't know this, the static equilibrium equation the wrong weight. It's not known ahead of time. 
So that means you cannot solve the problem and you don't get the job. You, you say you're fired, right? So how can you get that? I mean, the, the, the only force acting here is gravity, right? It's a gravity. Yeah. So what happens if you make gravity zero? Well, that, you can do that on paper, right? You cannot do that physically, but how will the bridge look like under zero gravity? The way it is now? Uh, the current configuration? Yeah, it will be... <clears throat> you, can, you can actually start from the zero gravity position. Basically, zero cable of the zero gravity will be like this, pretty much, and and then you can. You can hang the, again, this will be not the actual length of the final suspender, but you can start with this configuration of the zero gravity. If you know the, um, basically you can do is just, from the geometry, just put the cable as straight lines. What happens when you apply gravity? The cable will Tension. sag, right? The cable will sag. And you compensate that by changing the length of these guys. So we'll, so we'll get a side. Okay. Okay. So you get to a pos um, there. And then how do you introduce traffic? Thank you, Jack. Whoops, I mean. Well, imagine you, you say there are trucks all the way, then you replace the trucks by distributed load. A distributed load. Okay, and you start with a zero distributed load and you apply up to the maximum, okay? So, so the application of gravity will give you one control parameter, let's say lambda one, lambda two might be the traffic, uh, lambda three might be what? Wind. Wind. Wind, yes. So patient bridges are very sensitive to wind, right? You see what happened to the Tacoma Narrows Bridge? Okay. Okay, and okay. so here you have a choice. You have gravity you apply, then you can apply wind with no traffic or traffic without wind or or traffic and wind together and etc. And the solution you cannot superimpose it will be different because this is a nonlinear system. Okay. So so the, so the basic idea is uh, you have um, um, if you have a suppose you have two control parameters like lambda one, lambda two. Okay, um, and you you say you vary only the lambda one and you get to this point A. That will be, for example, the solution of this with the gravity. Okay, then you, then you move this. Okay, you go to lambda two. And 
and so on. Okay? So, so each of these is uh, each of these are called stages. So this is stage one. This is stage two. Okay? And over each stage you can apply a control parameter that goes from zero here to one there. That would be your lambda. Once you're there, you reset the lambda to zero again. You go zero to one, you go there. Okay. So, so that's the way you analyze a nonlinear system. You basically um, change one parameter at a time. If, okay. What happens if you want to apply these two together in a certain ratio? Let's say, okay. You might have a stage like going like here. Right? You're applying one, one load, two loads simultaneously and traversing like that. Okay. So then result of this, we need actually, um, we need only um, um, to look at this nonlinear uh, residual equation with one parameter. And that basically can reduce that to an ODE system which you can integrate in through the time. So we'll do, we'll do that in the next, um, next lecture is about that equation. Okay. okay. Um, so that's the end. And don't forget uh, to do, don't forget to try to start the um, homework. Uh, as I mentioned, you can form groups and consult, but each, each one of you has to submit an individual homework.